Since I'm starting my own Twisted Bow rebuild, I thought it would be beneficial to use this range gear upgrade guide as a way to show all of you how I'm approaching this rebuild and what gear I'm prioritizing on buying first and how I plan on building up my gear on the account. So hopefully this video will help you guys figure out on what you should be prioritizing and buying first to help progress your range gear. In the comments section, I want to know what your first memory of training range was, and for me, it was me and my friends walking to Varrock to buy arrows and then walking back to Lumbridge to train on cows. RuneScape used to just, it just used to be so much simpler. So same thing as the last video, a couple parameters I'm going to set for the video, and number one is that this video will be structured around a more general use for your range gear and buying the gear that will give you the most overall use. I will go into more specific pieces of gear, namely things like Dragon Hunter Crossbow, Crystal Armor, things like that, at the end of the video, but the majority of the video will be discussing gear for more general use and secondly i only want to discuss gear if it's a relatively expensive piece of gear since most cheaper pieces of gear you can just buy whenever you need it and it doesn't really require much thought the more expensive gear is what people tend to mull over when they're thinking about what they want to spend their money on because it's more of a investment to actually buy that piece of gear the starting gear we will have will be assuming that we have 70 range and defense and so from top to bottom we will be using a blessed dehyde coif Ava's Accumulator, Glory, Rune Arrows or Broad Bolts, which require 50 Slayer, or Mithril Bolts. Um, our weapon will be either a Magic Shortbow Imbued or Rune Crossbow. Um, Bless Dehyde Top, Bless Dehyde Chavs, Bless Dehyde Van Braces, Snakeskin Boots, and the Ring Slot is slightly irrelevant due to the price of rings. So, Ring can be whatever you want for this Welfare setup. And for your shield, just you can make it a dragon hide shield like a black dragon hide shield and for the final setup we'll be looking at something like this it'll be an arbidel helmet an ava's assembler the necklace of anguish dragon arrows twisted bow and toxic blowpipe you do need both of them to technically be the most efficient and the toxic blowpipe will have either adamant rune or dragon darts in it an arbidel top a twisted buckler or dragon fire ward if using a crossbow armadillo legs barrows gloves pagasian boots and an archer ring imbued so again very expensive stuff in this setup, but we'll work our way towards that through gear progression and being as cost effective as possible with our decisions and our upgrades. Before we get into the actual gear upgrading, there's a topic that someone brought up in the comments of the last video that I wanted to tackle first off here, and that's the topic of when is it okay to sell something to buy an upgrade? It's a topic that not a lot of other YouTubers really kind of go over in this, they don't really go into much detail in their thought process behind it. So that's what I want to tackle first and give you a short little paragraph on it. Um, if you want to skip this section, skip to the time on screen. I will have that on the screen because I know some of you don't really care. Um, also timestamps in the description, but you should already know this by now if you've watched any of my videos in the past. Um, so to answer that question about upgrading, unfortunately there's no real black and white answer for this because there are so many variables to this question. But I'll do my best to explain like my thought process behind when I sell something for an upgrade. And my thought process really kind of comes down to first I look at my gear and think about what do I want to upgrade first off. And usually this consists of me trying to prioritize anything with a large DPS increase, which tends to be something with a large strength bonus or percent damage increase depending on the attack style that I'm working in. Then I'll look at what I have in terms of money or capital to work with and see what I have available to purchase gear. Um, if that piece of gear I know I want is out of reach, then what I will do is purchase a less expensive gear as kind of like an intermediate piece of gear that's not as big as a DPS increase, but still an increase and use that for the time being. And once I have gathered enough money to purchase that piece of gear I initially wanted, I will sell off that intermediate piece of gear and use those funds to buy the larger DPS increase item. If you can justify the money that you could potentially lose from selling off a piece of gear to be bought in between your initial piece of gear you wanted, then go ahead and sell it off. In my case, selling off the armor helmet to get an anguish is something that I can absolutely justify because there's a huge DPS, t DPS increase in going from a glory to an anguish rather than going from a dehyde coif to an armor helm. I hope this explains the thought process a little bit better when it comes to like rearranging your assets, rearranging your money uh, in terms of gear. but. If there's anything unclear here, like just reach out to me. I'll be happy to kind of like give you an idea. Like if there's a certain piece of gear you're thinking about upgrading, you don't know if it's worth it or not, just hit me up, hit me up on Discord, hit me up on Twitter, whatever. Just ask me and I'll try to help you think through it for yourself. 
Okay, so into the actual upgrading of your gear. First things first, upgrade your boots into some plus dehyde boots. These have come down in price quite a bit from the 1.1 mil they were sitting around when I made my first video on range gear. Now you can get a pair for around 700-800k compared to the snakeskin boots. These will give you plus 4 in range accuracy better defenses as well as an additional prayer bonus. Um, we're gonna use these until we eventually have enough money for pagations, so make sure you pick a color you like because you're gonna be seeing it a lot. Okay, so we've gotten our blessed dehyde boots and that's really like the only piece of gear we really wanna upgrade before we begin talking about weapons. And weapons in ranged are, I would argue to be more important than they are in melee. And that's because not a lot of pieces of gear in the ranging style affect your DPS outside of your weapon. Uh, so it's probably the most important piece of gear to upgrading your ranging set. So the most general use weapon that you can buy for your account is going to be a toxic blowpipe for around 3 to 3.2 mil and it requires 75 range to use and needs to be charged with Zolar scales and loaded with darts of any kind. Recommended that you use adamant darts for casual use, things like Zora, things like training, whatever, Slayer. And then use rune or dragon darts for any higher level PVM things like, you know, Chambers of Zarek or TOB. The blowpipe can hold 16,383 darts and scales, which means that it will cost you around 2.5 mil to completely charge the blowpipe with scales. To note here, it doesn't have to be fully charged in order for you to use it. It just needs to have some scales in it um, before it can be used. This is one of, if not the highest DPS weapon in the game and needs to be acquired as soon as possible. On Rapid, this is a two tick weapon and we can hit 20s consistently at 99 range and up to 40s with its special attack. This even out DPS is a twisted bow at some areas. Like this is, if you've played this game for any amount of time, you know how strong a blowpipe is. If you don't have a blowpipe, heavily recommend getting it. It is arguably broken and it is a stupidly strong weapon because it gives you, the reason it's so strong is because you use darts. It's basically a dart, but it's like a dart with steroids on it. You're a, you get to use darts with like heavily increased accuracy as well as some more range strength. And it's just in it venoms. Like there's just so much to like about this weapon. Just uh, first things first, get a blowpipe. Thank me later. You're going to use this thing for like forever. I promise. Jokes aside, if you need to use a one-handed weapon for whatever reason, again, the blowpipe is better in almost like every situation, but let's say you want to go range Churroths, or you need to use a crossbow, like if you're going to go attempt the Inferno, or skeletal wyverns, whatever. Um, the order of which crossbows are from best to worst are the Armado crossbow, the Dragon crossbow, and then the Rune crossbow. I will not include, or I will include the uh, Dragon Hunter crossbow at the end. I'm not going to include it here because it's not a general use weapon. Uh, the ACB, or the Armado crossbow, requires 70 range and costs around 27 mil. What's nice about this crossbow is that it has a plus one range bonus. Like, not range attack, I mean like actual range over the other crossbows, which allows you to attack from further away, obviously. Uh, the Dragon Crossbow, not the Dragon Hunter, but the Dragon Crossbow requires 64 ranged. Dude, I know, I have no idea like why range has these ridiculous level requirements. Like, I don't get it, but whatever, we're gonna go on. Uh, the Crossbow is one of the, it's the first one that allows you to use Dragon Bolts, which is a noticeable increase in damage over Runite Bolts. And the nice thing about Dragon Bolts is that, um, it can be any gem tipped bolts. So you like, if you look at diamond or ruby bolts, they have to be adamant bar or adamant bolts. But with dragon, dragon can be any gem tipped bolt. So dragon bolts can be gem or they can be opal. They can be onyx. They can be ruby, diamond, sapphire. They can be anything. So that is a very nice thing about dragon bolts. You get to use the highest range strength uh, ammo in the game, as well as being able to enchant it with whatever gem you want. In terms of offhands for ranging, you have two options here, and that's if you want more DPS, if you want, or if you want more defenses. In terms of offensive offhanders, our upgrade path looks like this: uh, the Black Dehyde Shield, which requires 40 defense and 70 range, costs around 21k. The Book of Law, which requires around 500k GP to complete and requires you to complete a horror from the deep. The Odium Ward, which requires 60 defense and is about 1.8 to 2 mil. The Dragonfire Ward, which requires 70 range and 75 defense, which is around 30 mil. And the Twisted Buckler, which requires 75 range and defense and costs around 6 to 7 mil. 
The Twisted Buckler is better than the Dragonfire Ward in most situations, with the exception being if you need to range any kind of dragon, then obviously the Dragonfire Ward is better there. Fun fact, if you don't have a Dragonfire Ward, then use an Anti-Dragon Shield if you are ranging dragons, because the DFS, or the Dragonfire Shield, actually gives a negative range bonus. And if you're looking for defenses in your shield, then an upgrade path looks like this. You can go for a Runekite Shield, which requires 40 defense and is 30k, a Blessed Spirit Shield, which requires 70 defense and 60 prayer, which costs around that 1.5 mil, and then it's like a Lysian Spirit Shield, which requires 75 defense and prayer, costs around 670 to 675 mil. Um, you will not be using defensive offhanders most of the time. Uh, just realistically, just buy whichever one you need, giving your finances if you need it. Uh, most times it's generally better to have more offensive capabilities and defensive capabilities with range due to you being able to stay spot monsters, so defensive bonuses are kind of negated. And then a short section on the TiVo. Um, it's a good weapon. You should get it if you can. It's, it's a good weapon. So I know this section didn't have like a black and white upgrade path here, but due to the nature of range and with just how important your weapon and ammo is when it comes to your DPS output, it's hard to not prioritize your weapon over anything else. And this is why Tebow rebuilds are a common thing because of the DPS that a Tebow can put out is worth just rebuilding your bank over. So in conclusion of the weapon section, get a toxic blowpipe and rock that thing for like forever. If you get into raids, then buy a dragon crossbow if you don't know how to save spot mystics or for some other niche uses so that you need to use a one-hander. Otherwise, you're almost always just gonna use the toxic blowpipe for every situation, except for niche situations, which I will discuss at the end and with the Dragon Hunter gear. Okay, thank you for coming to my TED talk about ranged weapons, back to upgrading. Your neck piece, get that glory out of here. We're going to, for the Necklace of Anguish, which requires 75 HP and is around 14.1 mil GP. Uh, this necklace is the best upgrade for your gear besides your weapon because it is one of the few pieces of gear that gives you plus five range strength. I know this is a very expensive item compared to our, how our first item was only like 700K, but it's well worth it for the DPS increase you get out of it. Speaking of gear that increases your rank strength, the Ava's Assembler does just that. It is attained by giving Ava in Draenor Manor an Ava's Accumulator or 4,999 GP, 4 Cath's Head, and 75 Mithril Arrows. Once you've done that, you will have the best in slot range cape in the game. Not only does it provide more attack bonus and range strength than the Accumulator, but it also has a better ammo recovery rate. Your ammo recovery rate with the Assembler is you have an 80% chance for every shot to be recovered, and 20% chance of that ammo to break on impact, versus the Accumulator, which is the same chance to break on impact, 20%, but only 72% chance to be recovered automatically. The remaining 8% of the time, the ammo will drop to the floor. So it is also a great quality of life increase as well, and places like Zora or Vorkath where you can't see the ammo drop to the floor, you'll never have to worry about this with the assembler. So complete Dragon Slayer 2, get your maximum 50 Vorkath kills for the head, and then go get your assembler. I know I should have probably mentioned this in the cape section, but it's still worth mentioning. On your way to 200 quest points for the assembler, Upgrade your gloves to Barrow's gloves. They are best in slot for range gear and are incredibly cheap for the value at being only 130k from the col Whatever the, the RFD chest, you know what I'm talking about. Upgrade these, hold on to them forever, at least until Jagex comes out with something better than that, because it's gonna happen. Alright, we look a little bit more like a Chad now. Next, upgrade your ring. Get an archer's ring. Unfortunately, there's no real in-between ring here, except for like an explorer's ring for prayer bonus or like a ring of stone or a guardian's ring for defensive bonuses. Uh, for range bonus though, there isn't really a piece of gear that does that. Brimstone ring, you could argue it, but I'd rather just spend this almost same amount of money for an archer's ring. Um, so the ring still offers plus four range attack bonus, and once it is imbued from Nightmare Zone, it will offer plus eight, and at a value of around five mil GP, it's actually a pretty good rate when it comes to buying best in slot gear for ranged. Ranged is like oddly expensive when purchasing best in slot gear, probably because it's the best combat style, but eh, I digress. So that stupid koi on your head? Yeah, get rid of it. Time to upgrade to the Armadale helmet and become Burb. Armadale Helmet requires 70 defense and range to use and costs around 6 mil GP. It gives us plus 10 range bonus, which is 3 more than that of the Coif, which we had on before. Uh, there are arguments for the Crystal Helmet here because it does give plus 1 range bonus over the Coif, but plus 1 accuracy to me and most people isn't worth the hassle of having to recharge a piece of gear and worry about the charges of it. 
Now, plus one strength bonus, that might get me to do something dumb like that, but plus one attack bonus, and I'm gonna pass on that one. Get you this Armadale helmet, and we'll move on to the next slot. Now I will inform you that these next purchases are going to be very expensive, and unfortunately, unfortunately, there is no real in-between here in terms of efficient gear, so here we go. First thing first, we'll go to Brigasian Boots. They cost around 30 mil GP, require 75 range and defense to wear, and these are the best boots to wear for ranging to give the largest jump in bonuses and our current gear. So we are going to prioritize these over any piece of Armadale at the moment. Uh, they are also cheaper than either the armor top and bottom, so they have that going for them as well. These boots have plus 12 range attack bonus, and when compared to the God Dehyde boots we had originally, we get an additional plus five range bonus over those boots in exchange for one prayer bonus. Um, if you are a one defense peer, um, usually you have more game knowledge than most people, so I'm assuming you don't need to watch this video. But if you are, hi. Um, Ranger boots are going to be your best in slot. Um, they're slightly less expensive than the or the Brigation boots, uh, but they will be your best in slot boot. Now the choice is between the Armadale chain skirt and top. Uh, we will go for the chain skirt first. Both get the same amount of range attack bonus, so we are really only paying for defensive bonuses between the two choices here. The chain skirt requires 70 defense and ranged and costs around 35 mil GP. It gives plus 20 range attack bonus, which is three more than the high chaps we had on before. And then we upgrade to the Armadale chest plate, which again, 70 defense and ranged, gives us 33 range attack bonus, which is three more than the D high we dehyde top we had on before and cost around 42 mil gp so you can see why these last two pieces of gear are last they cost an absurd amount of money for very little gain in any kind of offensive bonuses and that's going to do it for the gear progression portion now let's move on to some of the more niche things about ranged dragon hunter crossbow useful if camping vorkath or brutal black dragons or wyverns or stepping stone in your chambers of Zeric gear progression very expensive at 115 mil, requires 65 range to wield, and gives you 30% more accuracy and damage against dragons, wyverns, and the Great Ulm. This does stack with Void and the Slayer Helmet bonus, so if you're killing dragons, this is a good piece of gear to have. Void Knot Armor. Not the powerhouse it used to be before the nerfs. Uh, the full set requires you to have 42 attack, strength, defense, HP, range, and magic, as well as 22 prayer. The full set requires 850 pest control points to be bought from the pest control minigame. And the full set, when equipped, gives you plus 10% range accuracy and damage. And one of the reasons that this isn't like super good is that you don't get to wear any gear that gives you range accuracy itself in your helmet top, bottom, or glove slot. So you have four armor slots basically that are giving you no range accuracy since the void doesn't give you any actual accuracy. And since the bonus from void is a percentage, the bonus is lowered quite heavily when you can't wear gear that increases the range accuracy. It's noteworthy here though that the elite version of the gear increases the bonuses to 12.5%. And some niche uses for Void here are training at Nightmare Zone, going to Voidcath, Chambers of Zeric, and TOB. Um, so it still has its uses for sure, but also to stir the pot just a little bit more if I didn't do it already, Void is used as like the welfare setups for Chambers of Zeric and TOB. So it's good introductory gear for those, but the only spot where it's actual best in slot is at Voidcath for range because of the bonuses stacking from the Salvii the Void Knight Armor, and the Dragon Hunter Crossbow. At Vorkath, Void has a lot of things going for it. Carols. The only time Carols is needed is when you need extra defensive bonuses. So places like Fight Caves for the first time, going to Bandos or Zami, and um... Yeah, that's it. This gear gives the same offensive bonuses as Black Dehyde, so you are really only paying for the defensive bonuses of this gear, and in most scenarios, it just... It just frankly isn't worth it. And finally, Crystal Armor. Crystal Armor is borderline useless everywhere. Even with the increase in damage when wearing the full set, this still requires us to be using the Crystal Bow. And when you compare this to something like, oh, I don't know, wearing full Dehyde and a Blowpipe, the blow the Blowpipe and the Dehyde just still outperform it, even with the accuracy and damage increase from the Crystal Armor. Because, just, 
because of RuneScape and how combat works, just attacking more often is generally better in almost every situation. And a two-tick weapon that can hit like 25 is just stupid. This blowpipe is really freaking good, I'm sorry. Okay, the crystal helmet, okay, that might be the only like useful piece of gear because it has like relatively good magic defense, so it's useful for like tanking in the wild, but other than that, there's not a lot of uses for this, unfortunately. Credit to Gherkins for this info in the gear discord. Thank you a ton for that. It saved me a lot of time and research. I think I've tackled everything I wanted to in this video. Again, like last video, if there's a piece of gear you're questioning or a piece of gear that you would like my input on, please leave it in the comment section and we can have a discussion about it. Links to all my socials are in the description and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.